Oh boy. <laughs> Breakfast. Breakfast. Day one, day one. Okay, crew has it, listeners. We got two very special people in here today. Um, Michael, he had a little, little something, something. He couldn't make it today. So we got. Chris Tardio in the building yeah. from Force <laughs> to join us. Woo! And of course, this man needs no introduction. Joseph Shakura, Tommy Egan, come on, the star of Power, Power Book 4 Force. He's in the building. We're going to get into some, some stuff. Yeah, I can't help it now. Yeah. We're in it now, Gianni. <laughs> We're in it now, We're in it now. What's up, guys? What you been up to? Yo, man, this awful strike has yeah. been has been terrible because yeah. We're so proud of our show. We're so proud of our second season. We're so proud of Gary Lennon right. specifically. The writing, the storytelling has been so epic uh, for our second season of Power Book 4 Force. And yet we can't promote it on social media. Um, the rules are have been a little bit wonky. It's right. kind of like, you know, can I even retweet something? Answer is no. Um, you know, can you comment on stuff? Yes. So there's kind of this gray area. And what hurts is that. We're so proud of the season. For sure. So there's that real conflict right. of like, we want everybody to watch the damn thing. But right. it's at the same time, you know, you got to be supportive of your union so we can make change and everybody can get a fair paycheck. Of course. Of course. 100% supporting, you know, obviously the WGA. They came to a deal. Yeah. I think SAG Amen. is up next. And I'm super excited for that as well Same. for you guys because like season two is so good. Season two is so good. It's good, and it's and it's hard because I I felt for Chris because you know I'm with Lofton almost every day mm -hmm. and I and I feel for you guys because like I think about when Ghost last season was premiering. I'm reposting everything. I'm I'm clips this that and it I love it so much like and I'm proud of what we do. So it breaks my heart to see that you guys literally can't do that. Like I see your giant billboard of you and the Mustang on the 405. Yeah. <laughs> if that was me, yeah. And I just there's like a photo of me on the highway like this, and you can't repost right. that. I'm like, that's kind of how I close out my girls. I'm like, I'm like, I'm on I'm above Saddle Ranch right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Sir, do you have an ID? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, Gianni, why are we eating at Saddle Ranch six times a week? I'm like, listen, I only got a month of this. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it, do, it does suck. And I'm and I'm like, I love, season two is great. And I just, it's hard because you can't promote it. But listen, we do have to support our unions and all that. So there's gray areas, but I do want to get into some force stuff because. Yeah, no, we have to. But also yeah. one of the things I was talking to Chris on the way down here is like, you look at fifth, like how many people, there's like 30 million people that exclusively get their uh, power universe information from Curtis 50 Cent Jackson right. and fifth can't promote it. Right. So it's really has been a bit of a delay, but the positive things is that even though our numbers were way down at the beginning, we're now back up to where we were. Perfect. So it's a big, it's a big, wonderful underdog story. We're growing, we're back up, like our work, have, everybody's back, but it took people a little while because right. I've had even people saying right now, oh, you guys are back. Yeah. And then, oh yeah, it's great. At least I can't wait to binge and watch, you know, five, yeah. five hours worth at least. That's crazy that people don't even know it's back on because of that. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Um, all right, so before we get into some four stuff, I want to get into some Chris Tardio stuff. Because listen, this man was on one of the greatest shows of all time. I got my I got my shirt on today for it. Yeah. Um, we obviously had Joe's episode where we went, you know, in depth with him. So we'll do a little um you know i kind of want to get your story a little bit and hear how you kind of got into it and started and then how you ended up this is a crazy thing he tested for tommy egan against joe isn't that nuts it was kind of like with me because i have to say that we got uh, on we were like we both liked each other like from the beginning right yeah. it was probably the first time that i truly meant when i said chris remember i was just like Hey man, truly, if I don't get it, I really hope you do. Yeah, yeah. We went and had lunch, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, something happened in the process, the testing process, where like there was this break that Four wasn't hours. anticipated. We were, yeah. Yeah, and we yeah. went and we had lunch together. We were talking and like we became friends. We came back and it was, you know. That then, was in LA? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's yeah. crazy. It's so funny. I had that with one other person. We tested uh, for something for a movie against him. And I was going to the um, Ghost Writers Room season one. 
And I saw him walking on the lot. I wound up getting the movie, but like we stayed in touch. And I saw him walking on the lot um, when I was leaving. And Courtney had just said to me, um, think about who could play your brother if you know anyone. And he was literally walking by the kid Barrett. And I was like, oh my God. And I ran back in. I was like, him. I brought him in. I was like, him. Because he was shooting a show called Alexa and Katie. And they they sent the offer out to him, all that stuff. But he booked the lead on a show like a couple weeks after that happened. And that was only recur. But I, I know what you mean because you see something you're like, God, fuck this motherfucker. And then all of a sudden they're such a good guy. You're like, damn, I wanted to hate you. <laughs> it just makes it easier. It's like it's like when you're in a boxing match against someone, you're like, fuck, if I can hate this guy, it, it's easier to beat his ass, you yeah. know? And I'll tell you what. And then I watched, when I you know watched the first episode of the pilot, I was like, they picked the right guy, you know, <laughs> which is, yeah. yeah. So, so, so get it. So like, did you start acting in New York or LA? Uh, New York. Okay. New York, yeah. I, you know, it's, it's strange how I came to it all. I, um... I didn't dream of being an actor. You know, I, I had a situation when I was younger, got in trouble with something I didn't do, got off, and then I just knew I wasn't, you know, I wasn't going to go sit in an office and I wasn't going to, my I come from all plumbers, you know, and I right. wasn't going to do that. And, I, you know, life just led me there. It's, right. it's weird how it happened. But then once I started to, I, you know, fell in love with it. I was studying and Funny enough, Sopranos was my first audition. What? Yeah, I started off strong and everything, and then it goes. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That's that was your first audition. It was my first audition. So yeah. you did you go in just so green, being like, I, like, I, yeah. That was kind of how yeah. I was. Where like, I see it now. I don't know like, anything. Holy shit! Like, yeah. I would love to get an opportunity to do that again now. You know what I mean? But yeah, and and also, at that time, you know, a lot of actors didn't want to do television. Right. You know, that was one of the shows that kind of really, yeah. yeah, this renaissance of television that we've had. But I, yeah, I, I had no idea what I was walking into. It was completely green, you know, being on set. And then that that was the season the show really took off, yeah. you know? So it was it was wild. Were people like like? Did you get recognized at the time where girls like? Was it wild or? I you know there was, there was a little <laughs> See bit that of that. smile. <laughs> there was a little bit of that. Yeah. <laughs> that's I was so in a relationship at the time, but yeah, there was a little, there was a little bit of. That. Damn, that's awesome. Do you have any like wild soprano stories that anything that happened on set or anything like memorable from Gandolfini or anything like that or it was just kind of like. I had one day where I sat outside with James. We uh, it was in between takes, and we were sitting outside, and it was kind of like I was shy, man. You know, I'm yeah. I still am. I'm I'm just a shy guy. I'm not a conversation starter. <laughs> and it was like you know, we just sat out there, and we we had like a, a heart to heart, you know, and it was it was really very memorable and nice, and you know, he gave me a little advice, you know, and and uh, yeah, it's one of those things that. I don't remember all the content of the conversation, but it was it was great. Do you remember the advice he gave you? Um. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Keeping it close to his chest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't Very want me soprano. to book shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It was more like just um, don't take anything personal. Forgive. Move on. Let go. You know. I like that. In this business, right? You know, just oh, yeah. A lot of times it's not yeah, personal. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. It so, then, so then, hard so then, to do that. You, you up? I said it's hard I'm to do that. It is. It really is. <laughs> it's tough. Um, so then, you you obviously have guest starred on a lot of shows, and then power comes along. Um, the email comes in. Did you have any expectation? Like, what what was the prep for? What was your prep for Tommy? What was my prep for Tommy? Um, well, back then, I I don't want to say I wasn't far from what Tommy was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But I felt very confident in those those sorts of roles. He was moving copious amounts of weight instead. Copious right. amounts of weight. <laughs> eating, He's like, I am strawberry too. ice cream. <laughs> yeah. No, and I, and I um. But you did the first round of auditions for Tommy, which I, initially, which we've gone over, was called Eddie O'Neill. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, I was not available for that first round of auditions for Tommy because uh, I was getting married. Mm. Um and. Uh, Chris ended up going as far as it was going to go with the Tommy character, if I'm remembering this correctly, mm -hmm. because 50 was still going to be Ghost. Right. And uh, keep going. Go, don't let me. Don't. No, no, no. That's I just, you know, we, we ended up there in Beverly Hills and we were testing together. And, you know, it was it could go either way at that point. Right. And, um, you know, I felt great about what I was doing. But in, in retrospect, I definitely I'm not that guy. You know, it's funny. My my parents are now watching 
force. Right. And my mother is like, oh, he's so good. She's like, honey, you, you weren't that guy. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and yeah, my mother I'm thinks wrong. I'm every guy. Right. She thinks I should be in everything. So, you know, uh, it, it all worked out the way it was supposed to. And it's great to be there now. For but, sure. And we the room was split between us. There were certainly people, you know, who shall remain nameless, who wanted Chris, who, who their vote was for Chris. But um, what I was told by other somebody <laughs> else that was, will remain nameless was that Chris was would have been the Tommy character for sure if right. 50 was playing Ghost. And part of that is because Chris is olive skinned. He's Italian, you know? And he's he's got a, a, a darker complexion than, than me. And 50 is dark complected, whereas Omari is very light complected. Right. So it's not as, you know, I mean, obviously it's a white guy and a black guy, but it's still not as distinguishable as a translucent white guy <laughs> right, and a right. light skinned <laughs> black guy. Right. So it's like, you know, there's a good lesson for people to learn too, is that you, you, you have to be good. Right. Of course. But then there's factors you can't control, like the color of your skin. Right. And it's like, but and you, sometimes. And, yeah, exactly. Height and who you look better like against and stuff. So there was a part of it is just that I'm just lighter skin than Chris that gave a, vi a visual that said to certain people that were decision makers that said, no, no, that's it. Because that's, that's what's going to sell on a poster. Yeah. That guy's white. That guy's black. That's it. That's what our story is. Right. More. So it's that kind of, you know, crazy bullshit could have gone either way, but it was just like, yeah, yeah, it was, it's it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. It crazy, and that we stayed friends. Yeah, and yeah. that he's on yeah. the show now. So that's yeah. the first time you met him. Yeah, and then you guys completely were just like we knew a lot of people in common. Yeah, we had a lot of yeah mutual friends. Right, and then you stayed in touch while you were doing Power. You guys stayed in touch. Mm -hmm. Well, then I had another friend who was on Power, Catherine Narducci, and yep. one day I was hanging out with Catherine, and we ran into Joe and, and his wife, and we ended up you know going back and we hung out all day and blah blah blah, and then. I'll and tell you another funny thing. And Perino. Yeah, because Perino's the man. I love Perino. Perino's the best. One day, me, Perino, and Joe were hanging out, and we're, we're just talking about acting and accents, and Joe's doing all these accents and really gifted with accents. I'm not. Yeah. But it was funny when this Force audition came up, <laughs> and I did the first round of auditions for that. Um, they reached out, and they were like, can you do the Chicago accent? And I'm like, yeah. And then I remembered him with the accents and he's from Chicago. And it's like, if people try to do a New York accent with, you know, I'm like, and he's going to be the one who's going to be, and I was like, oh shit. But then he, he came through clutch and got me to talk to two of his friends who were from Chicago, two very different, an iron worker and a cop. And, right. you know, the accents, I heard them. And then I did the audition with the accent and then a few days later, I get a text from Joe. I forgot exactly what he said, but I'm like, does that mean I got it? And he's like, oops. And I said, so my accent was okay? And he said, well, let's put it this way. You're probably from New York. <laughs> <laughs> so, But, but yeah. that's, that's another genius part of Gary. Like Gary champions um, uh, talent. Right. And if it's like... Gary can be like, oh, what's more important that the guys are born and raised Chicagoan, or is it the, does it matter that we have the, got the best actor? And right. the, the obvious answer is the best actor, because Gary can you know make he can kind of make anything work. Right. Um, so it was just kind of like he, he gave a really cool backstory of the character being from New York but living in Chicago now for how long was it? Twenty years or something yeah. like that. Yeah. So so every now and again he slips in a pretty kind of a flat A that would. Uh, Make my father proud. <laughs> so as you know, we live in an increasingly automated world, but there are some things that do require tedious manual work. Yeah, man, AI is taking over right now. But luckily for e-commerce business owners, shipping is no longer a manual task thanks to ShipStation. They got you covered. It's so easy to use the ShipStation dashboard to manage your orders. There's a free trial and it's a quick setup. So now's the time to try ShipStation out if you've been on the fence. ShipStation makes it easy to automate shipping tax for orders from every marketplace in one dashboard. It has effortless integration anywhere you sell online, including Amazon, Etsy, eBay, Shopify, and more. You can manage every order from one simple dashboard. You can print shipping labels. You can easily compare rates and delivery times to optimize every single shipment. And you can automate delivery notifications. I mean, can it be easier? Now look, with industry-leading discounts, you'll never worry about overpaying for shipping. You could get up to 84% off. I mean... 
That's damn near free to me. That's basically free. <laughs> and that's all on USPS and UPS rates. And if that's not enough, you know, the boys got you covered. You can use our promo code to try ShipStation free for two months. I mean, come on. Over 130,000 companies have grown their e-commerce business with ShipStation. And 98% of the customers that stick with ShipStation for a year, they end up becoming customers for life. Damn, that's like the opposite of me, dude. My return rate is not great. <laughs> <laughs> Look, spend some more time growing your business when you automate shipping tasks with ShipStation. Make sure you go to ShipStation.com, use the code the crew today, and sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com and use the code the crew. Listen, if you have a business, if you have any merch or anything, ShipStation is the company for you. Back to the episode. Can real quick, can you just explain uh, who Gary is for the listeners who don't? Okay, uh, everybody, Gary Lennon uh, was brought on the second season of the original Power Show, and a big reason was was to develop the Tommy character. Uh, Gary is from Manhattan. He is from Hell's Kitchen. His brothers were uh, very very rough and tumble. Gary had a really tough life, and that's really reflected in kind of the struggles, but the celebration of life with the Tommy character. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously, Courtney made up the Tommy character and did an incredible job, and I'm super grateful. Gary really rounded that character out, really humanized him, and made him 360. And Gary was the co-showrunner of the Power Show in the last final two seasons, or at least the last season of the original Power Show. And now he is the showrunner of Power Book for Force. Uh, he took over uh, for our second season. Amazing. And hopefully we have a third and fourth. Yeah. Yeah. And fifth, who knows? <laughs> yeah, let's keep it going. Keep it going, baby. <laughs> keep it going, baby. A lot more storytelling to do. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Gary's Gary's great. Um, I just wanted you to explain that because um, a lot, like a lot of the loyal, loyal, loyal power fans who've been around since day one on social media, they'll see Gary Len people reposting Gary Lennon, but some people, you know, are still confused on who who does what, um, who does what, and how they do it. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. right. But he. Um, uh, he did he direct a lot of yeah he directed a bunch of the power shows yeah. uh, power episodes in fact my favorite episode of the power show is season five episode nine which is uh, the one where I kill my father um, and Gary Lennon directed that one he also wrote it and he did one of the thing one of the coolest things I've ever had happen in my career. And that was we would do scenes and then we would do the scene for a take without any words. So he's like, now just do the scene, but no dialogue. Mm -hmm. So there would be that time. And then there, you'd think about that line and then you would do the the action, like right. go to here, but no words. Yeah. And he kind of cut it where you had a lot, there was a lot less words than were on the page in the original script. Cause he used the, a decent amount of the cutups of the takes of like where we didn't say anything. Yeah. You know, what's interesting is, you know, who works like that, who I saw Octavia Spencer, I was on oh. set with her and she, she does all the motion. Cause I remember there was like a scene in a movie that, that I did with her and she had to like kill or do certain like crazy things to all of us in a basement. And she would do the action and the lines were like, in her, like this and that. And that was the first time I ever saw that. And I was like, that's real interesting. It, Cause it's so weird as an actor, like you don't know what will what will work for you what will hit what will make sense to you until really you do it you know and i think that's the best and most fun part of it is when you get there on that day and like 50 worked a little bit like that when he was directing where he was like well what are your guys actions like what do you want to do mm -hmm. and i love directors that work like that like outside i had a good box. time being directed by fifth too because i think that people lose sight that 50 is very precise right like you it just even as a musician there's always a musicality to it and even just like how it was interpreted on the screen like fifth knew what he wanted it to look like for sure and he doesn't he never is afraid to ask for help right He's like, yo, get, get what's his name? Get over here. Who's right. this in the, make it go like this. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, but he knows yeah. his lens oh, yeah. is like, he, it's yeah, yeah. crazy. Like I was so From video away. shoots, I was yeah. assuming too. Right, right. Yeah, he did great. Yeah. Fifth was a great director. He, um, has he directed one of Force, uh, one episode of Force? Uh, no, 50 hasn't directed a, a Force at all because he was, uh, God, he was like touring at first. And then, um. Yeah, he hasn't. I'd love for Fifth to direct an yeah. episode. Season three, Fifth, you got to direct. Yeah, for sure. What's for up, sure, man? For sure. It, but, and then he didn't direct Kanan, I don't think. So he's only done one episode of Power, right? I think so. Yeah, that's crazy. But also just to do that and just like to sit there and be like, yeah, I did it. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, so you live here right now in New York. I do, yes. Because I went out to see the boys in Chicago, and the whole Force crew was there. And it I was finally, awesome. Bro, I finally met your guys' whole cast. Like, you guys have the greatest fucking group of people. Such a nice group They're of people. The best. The best. And a lot of them are Chicago locals. A lot of Chicago locals. Yeah. A lot of talent. One of the things was is Gary, again, Gary Lennon, for all of you people who weren't listening a second ago, Gary Lennon, <laughs> no. Uh, Gary, but Gary's huge into hiring locals yeah. for Chicago. So he has really given it such an incredible opportunity to so many actors who are super capable and wonderful, and especially uh, young actors of color, as you know. Right. It's like if you're in Chicago, oftentimes you're uh, booked over. Right. But now in this modern day and age of kind of like sending in your auditions and stuff, it was so many wonderful young actors. I mean, right. God, Lucian is from Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, Lucian Cambridge, who, yep. who uh, plays my nephew, D-Mac. And- um, I love him. Um, he's the sweetest dude. Sweetest. He's got such a big heart. And genuine. He's yeah. like asks these really yeah. genuine, poignant questions. You know what was so funny? When, I, when we were, uh, no one was on stage yet and he just came up to me. I was out, I was just like taking it all in. Cause I, I'm starting to try to do that more. I was taking it all in, I was seeing everyone file in for the 50 show and he just comes up and he goes, what do you want to accomplish? And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> and I was like- Heavy question. Yeah, I was like, I, like, I want to do a, like a big movie franchise like, like that. Like I thought he was talking about career. And then I was like, what do you want to accomplish? And he's like, I really want to give back to like the underprivileged neighborhoods. I'm like, can I change my <laughs> fucking answer? I was like, damn it, dude. This, like, he really like, that's just who he is. Like he's such a good dude. And I like, it kind of hit me when he said that. I was like, oh my, like this guy cares. Like you don't really get that. A lot of actors yeah. just like my answer was kind of superficial in a way, but like, that's the way a lot of actors can be. And like, he really like- Not only actors. <laughs> yeah, it's true, I guess. <laughs> it's also, that's not, it's not like a self, like you saying that, like, you know, I just want people who are listening to this, like, that's not a selfish answer. You're super driven. Right. Like you're, you're you inspire me in a way that like, I, I'm very, as you know, I'm a little paranoid. I'm a little <laughs> distrusting of people. Yeah. I, I kind of tend to think people are out to get me a little right. bit because I didn't have success as an actor for a long time and I was manipulated and put down. And so I still carry the burdens of like having to find levity in, in my life. And right. I do, and you live in levity yeah. and I'm jealous of that or I have been. And I, and I'm glad I'm not, I'm glad that we're friends and like, and to, to, um, to see you win and to encourage your winning is a different way. So when you're like, I want a movie franchise, I want this, you're gonna do it. Yeah. Like I meet people like very rarely, but like I believe when you say you're gonna do something, I'm like, oh yeah, like sign me up. If Johnny says he's gonna do it, he's gonna do it <laughs> at some point. So that uh, like that really does mean a lot to me. Like you have no idea, especially early power when. So when I watched the show, um, I didn't watch it until I fi and until I finished se filming season six. And I remember I watched the show in like maybe five days. Yeah. And I was like, Joseph Shakur is the fucking greatest actor of all time. I was like, <laughs> I was literally like, what's that? I was like, Tommy's the fucking coolest. And like that, it was, and I was like, I'm on this fucking show. Like it, it didn't hit me until then. So that's why like, I, I really wanted to just be around you and, and talk to you. And obviously, you know, we, we had our little thing, but like, I'm so glad where we've arrived to because we just have so much, you know, mutual respect for each other, especially album was a big bridge in that. But, um, yeah, I, I really fucking love your work and, and it's crazy. Cause I'll be watching something. Like I was watching shutter Island, like a couple months ago. I was like, Holy <laughs> Me too. Me too. That yeah. happened to you? Yeah. What, what, what was that like? Cause we didn't talk about that in your episode. It was a 76 cent check coming my way. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's a that's a big franchise movie, don't you? I thought you get well. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, maybe two dollars and fifty cents, but uh, <laughs> and truly, I can make nothing on that. But again, it was like it was a bigger role right. that got cut down. But there was an Irish gangster on Boardwalk Empire from Chicago for like four episodes in season one. Dark. I, I wish I and I know who the actor is, and it's on the tip of my tongue. But he's you know dark hair, uh, Irish guy. Anyway, long story short was. Uh, I I was trying to audition for that role to get it back, and they were like, and Terry Kinney was even saying part of the story. He's like, oh yeah, no, I told Marty, wouldn't he be great for this Irish gangster? And Marty's like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm editing him right now in Shutter Island. Um, uh, I want him from Hans Schroeder, and then it was like he was like, yeah, but wouldn't wouldn't Sakura be great for uh this for the this other role? And he's like, yeah, 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 he'd be, he'd be great. Uh, uh, hire him for Hans Schroeder. <laughs> So, which is Hans Schroeder yeah. was the guy in Boardwalk Empire who gets killed in yeah. the pilot. So, um, 
But uh, it, that that was just you know another a funny thing that that job led to another job, and it was just yeah. a little bit. But then again, I had most of my lines cut out of the movie because it's not a movie about Glenn Mega, right. what I believe his name was. Uh, and uh, it it is what it is. But it was a it was just incredible to be directed by Martin Scorsese. Yeah, I was gonna ask how how was that? It was cool because then when we did the pilot, he when we were doing Boardwalk, it was me, him, and Kelly McDonald in a room. And he was like, oh, tell me a little bit about your character. And I, you know, I was like, oh, can I mind if I get out my notes? He's like, yeah, yeah. Can, can, you got time, Kelly? Can, read them. Read read what you wrote. So I like read three pages of backstory that I made up for my character. And he was like, oh, yeah, it's great. It's great. <laughs> I, love and I, it's just, I love your Scorsese. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's great. <laughs> it's, it's, to, it's, yeah, it's totally off. There's a modicum of truth in it. But, but again, like just that. You see somebody of that caliber that cares about every aspect of it is around for the storytelling and just is so passionate of a storyteller that it's like yeah yeah I love being around that kind of energy. for sure. How about you, man? Anybody who's who's a director? That's literally what I was just about to ask him. I'm oh, curious yeah. too, like because you've been on a ton, been of, a ton shit. of shows. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I I had a fantastic experience working with Michael Keaton. You know just watching him and, and being across from him, you know, that, that was, that was really great. Um, would you work on him with a film called worth? With him? Okay, cool. Yeah. It's about nine 11. He it was about the uh, victim relief fund. He mm -hmm. played, um, the lawyer who was in charge of that. And, uh, yeah, I had some great scenes with him, but it was, it was an interesting experience, man. You know, he's very serious with what he does. And obviously, you know, he is who he is. And right. that was great. Um, I, I loved working with Voight, John Voight That's on, well. yeah. on uh, Ray Donovan. Ray Donovan he, yeah. yeah, he was, he was awesome. I'll tell you a funny story. We do this scene where um, uh, they, you know, beat me up in a bar, him and his sons, and they drag me out and they, they take me hostage. And, you know, he comes up to me with like a ruse at first and he's like, Hey, you know, and he's trying to talk to me and I'm, listen, man, you know, get this guy a drink, get him out of here kind of thing. And yeah. he sucker punches me and knocks me off a stool and they grab me and they drag me out. He actually hit me. What? <laughs> like on accident or he was like, I'm fucking No, on this. accident, on accident. And he hit me, we finished the scene, they drag me out of the bar, they'll cut and he comes up, he goes, oh man. He's like, I, I caught you there, I'm sorry. I was like, nah, it's all right, I'm fine. He's like, yeah. Sure. He said, that's what happens when you get older. See, you got nothing left in your punch. So, you know, like <laughs> yeah. a guy like him, he was, he was great. I, I've been so fortunate. I mean, honestly, you know, you hear horror stories. I've not really encountered any of that. Right. You know, like everyone I've worked with has been great. I'm um, very generous and, and yeah, I, my yeah. experiences have been nothing but positive. What's your favorite thing you've ever done? Like maybe not, <clears throat> g give me your favorite result oriented thing. Like, like what was the coolest thing? Like obviously Sopranos is such a cool like thing for your IMDB. And what was the best thing that you did while you were on set? Like the most fun you had? This force, oh, to be quite amazing. honest, man. I showed up that. in Chicago and like this guy like rolled out the red carpet and yeah. you know, I met everyone before I ended up on set and everyone that I worked with, you know, I mean, wardrobe to makeup to every sound, camera, everybody, PAs, everybody was just great. And I, and I mean that. Like, I'm not a yeah. I'm not a bullshit artist, you yeah. know. Like, I mean that from my heart. Yeah. Um. So that experience was fantastic. But, you know, it's I've had again, like I said, primarily positive experiences. My favorite job prior to this, believe it or not, was a soap opera. Oh, what was it? It was as the world turns. And I was like, I'm not doing a soap opera. And they were like, come on, man. If you do this, you know, you can go to LA for pilot season. This is going back, right? right? And I was so anti. Um, at the time, my agent talked me into doing it. And I went to do it. Turned into uh, quite a few more episodes than it was supposed to be. And um, it was exactly what I needed. Because, you yeah. know, we, we talked about being green with Sopranos, right? Well, here now you're doing 50 episodes of a pot, of a uh, of a soap opera, and you, you you know they got three cameras going at once, right? Mm -hmm. So if technically it works, that's it. They're moving on. Yeah. They're not really looking at the acting, right? How, how many pages are you shooting a day? My first day I had 60 pages. 60? You did 60? Yeah, I did three episodes in, in my first day, <laughs> and I was fuck? like, I was like. How am I gonna? Like, I was I was shitting my pants to be quite honest with you, but that was just it. Look at Joe's face. You know, like that was just it. I mean, I'm blown away. <laughs> yeah, it was. We usually do like six at yeah, most yeah, on yeah, power. Yeah. 
Oh no, they did. They're doing three episodes a day on a soap opera. Wow, that's you know, insane. Like, and it, yeah, it was crazy. I mean, they're not shooting a full episode in a day, but like you know, they're cross boarding and all this, and right. it's like they got you on this day, and you're shooting all this stuff. Right. And but it's really like an acting boot camp. It, like it, that's exactly like, right, like, and that's like, why yeah. that's why for me it was such a great experience because I was terrified. Yeah. And sometimes you feel for those actors, like, because everyone watches it at the gym. It's on at the gym. Well, they're a lot better than you think they are. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. there yeah. is a lot of great actors on these shows, but like, like, imagine if they just used every one of your first takes for oh, fucking about for force. No, thank You'd be you. pissed, right? Be You'd be pissed. like, what the fuck? So I, I, I kind of feel for those actors sometimes. Yeah. 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 And it was, it was just, a, it became a ton of fun. Once, once I got over that hurdle, right, of being afraid with all those pages, you know? Right. Um, then it just got fun. 60 pages of memorization is nuts. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I might be a little off with 60 pages, but it was close. To, like, it yeah. was really like, you know. Holy cow. I'm still like, I'm yeah. just, I'm scared already. <laughs> is like, that yeah. Every, yeah. That's every day yeah, too, right? Um, well, no, but. Some days are less, yeah. And some of these guys, man, they don't even look at their stuff at night when they go home. It's like in the morning, they're looking at it for the first time and they got all these it, Michael Rainey's good at that, but like we're only doing four pages, five pages a day. Yeah. Sixty pages not looking at it is you're bugged out for that. That's crazy. Yeah, man. Yeah. But you know, it's like as you guys know, it's it's sort of like a muscle, right? Yeah. Like the more you do it, the more, you know. Right. Well, I used to be like that, no no problem. Just with memorization was easy. But then after I got stage fright, which I think I went into the last time, mm -hmm. is that I have to be off book because otherwise I freak out. Like I, and I'll I'll freeze yeah. up. Yeah. yeah, me too. I I need to know what I'm doing. Yeah, but but, but I I didn't used to be like that. Like when I was doing theater as a kid, like I was, or even a young man, uh, up, up until the stage fright, I I didn't even think about the lines. They just stuff just happened. It just came out. Yeah, yeah that's crazy. It's outrageous. Yeah. yeah, the first time you you black out and you drop your lines. Well, for me, anyhow, that was the last time I had that sort of like just willy-nilly approach and then i was like nah man i need to be off book know what i'm doing now i can play and i can have fun and because that when when those lines go and you're suddenly like that's that's a scary experience yeah. do you have any like horrible like audition stories or like anything that happened on set like that or <laughs> now now we have to hear this because he's he thought of something immediately yeah. i have a lot of horrible <laughs> audition stories man i've had i've had nightmare audition stories um Oh, I hate auditioning. <laughs> I had it. I had. I, I've. I've actually. Someone told me to do this, and it worked for me. Someone told me to say you like it. So I used to hate it, and then I, I did. I so, someone. I was like, I fucking hate auditioning. I hate auditioning. And then someone was like, You got to change your attitude about that. Just say I like it. So literally, I, I immediately changed. It. I was like, I fucking love auditioning. People were like, What? I was like, Yeah, I love it. It's like it's competitive. It's great. And I was lying to myself. After two years. I would like, I can't fucking wait till the next one comes in. Cause the competitiveness of it, like, and you know that feeling when you leave the room, like the the breath out, but like also you still have the adrenaline. I got like a high from that. So I was like, I literally just said I liked auditioning for two years and then it, it came true. And now I love it. <laughs> All right, man, I'm changing my attitude, Chris. I don't <laughs> you, know about you. You got to do it. Just say yeah. you love it. Just start saying you love it and you'll just train your brain. And all of a sudden, like your, I think your body like just follows it and you're like okay i actually start to like it now it's weird someone told me to do it and i was like really and they're like yeah and then it worked for me so. I, I do the opposite i i say <laughs> Chris, oh, fucking man, character. This, this is just a part of it so you got to deal with it right. you know like you just have to accept this i hated auditioning right. i fuck i'm not one of those actors who you know a lot of actors are also performers right they like to be in front of a crowd they want the room to stop and everyone to look i'm not that guy right you know so when I walk into a room and everything gets quiet and everyone's looking at me like this, I'm like, oh, like that, that's a nightmare for me, right? So it took a long, long time for right. me to get comfortable with auditioning, a long time. And, you know, it would be like I'd go on one and, you know, I'd kill it. And I'd be like, wow, okay. And then the next one, I'd shit the bed. And then the next one would go, eh. And then the next one, I'd, you know. So for me, it was like this roller coaster. It was just this, this um, it was a torment, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you have to think about it. Like, it, there's nothing natural or what is going to happen on set is happening in that room. Like, no, it's, a it's really like you thing. don't have you don't have anything. It, you, it's just so not the way that it should be. But like, that's the business we're in, so we got to deal with it. But I love it. 
<laughs> I know you do. Oh, I know you do. <laughs> um, Me too, Gianni. It's, it's I it love it. I best. love auditioning. <laughs> so when when you sent in your tape for Force, um, a what scene was it? And B, did you like hit them up and be like, my like he read for Tommy back in the day, or you totally just like let was it in? Gary knew. Gary knew that he had auditioned for Tommy. We had like talked about it. And I know that when your audition came in, I mean, it was a great audition. And then I'm, mm -hmm. I, I could, I can also vouch for like, it's, it's like, you know, this, it's like, I, I am like, he's my friend. He's a great guy. He's right. going to be awesome on set. You know, it's out of and my that hands. matters too. Sure. Yeah. It's out of my hands at a certain point. Gary's making the decisions. Right. Um, because you're a producer, so you see all the tapes coming in anyways. Yep, yeah. yep. And I so I yeah. give in my two cents, but right. ultimately it will be Gary in the network and primarily Gary because um, uh, nine times out of ten, the network's not going to be like, we really want this guy. It's kind of like we tr we're trusting Gary as the kind of the guru of the of whatever talent and storytelling is coming in. Right. So we believe him. So it's, it's my responsibility to give my two cents for every audition of every role. Um, but then also because we have a background, it's going to be like, yeah, right. Hey, listen, man, I'm just, I'm, I would sign off on Tardio now and hopefully we can get him before he's not going to, because eventually he's not going to be available like right. in a couple of weeks. Cause he's, he works all the time. Right. So it's like, let's get him and get, bring him to Chicago. Right. So that was, that's Thanks, pretty much pal. how that thing went. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it was great audition and he's, I, it was a taping, not an audition. It was yeah, a taping. It was, it was a self tape. Yeah. Pretty much all, everyone from force was probably a tape because, because it was, it was a COVID. Right. That is for me, the, I mean, I say thank you, COVID, for that because <laughs> it changed this whole thing. Now I get to audition in my home, in, in the comfort of my home, and I don't have to go in this you love room. It. I, you I, love I, it. I love tapes. I, I love tapes, yeah. <laughs> I love self-tapes, too. <laughs> love you it. actually you know what? I love it. Uh, okay. We were talking earlier about L.A. That's what I loved about L.A. When I used to go audition in New York, I'd walk in and they'd be like, all right, you ready? All right. And it was like I was disturbing someone's lunch, you yeah. know? And after Sopranos, it didn't matter what room I walked into. They thought it was this guy. <laughs> yeah. Like every room I walked in, that's what they saw and that's what they heard. Right. It didn't matter what I was actually doing. That's what it was. Right. right. Then I went to L.A. and they're like, hi, yeah. do you want a coffee? <laughs> Would you like some water? <laughs> we'll be ready for you in a minute. And I yeah. was like, oh, OK. Yeah. Even if it's fake, I'll take that. I, that's why. Yeah. Because it's all about relaxation. Right. 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 I think LA, it, it was kind of crazy because you started in New York, right? So we kind of have opposites. I started in LA. So when I had, when I was here, um, I really started in Chicago. I mean, like, you right. know, I'm auditioning since I was 10 oh, years that, old. Yeah, that, so I, yeah, I forgot about that. That's crazy. That is. And so things would be coming into town and I'd be, be missing out, missing out, missing out, but it'd always be like the one other guy that's from you know, New York right. or, or <laughs> Los Angeles or right. something like that. But then they would kind of gloss over. Um, that, but I still, you know, piecemealed the career out. I never said no. Right. You know, it was always just always say yes to everything. Industrial commercials, you know, any kind of voiceover, weird like modeling for catalogs, anything that paid money. Yeah. You know, and then I always had another job, and I think that because I wasn't successful for so long in my career, it allowed me the opportunity of just really being. Um, a human being in the world and right. had a lot of observation and a lot of theater. I, you know, I had a lot of time, I had right. a lot of time on my hands. Right. right. Well, that's honestly like, so I trained my dog. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, people, people don't, uh, that's why sometimes these young actors who start off like at 10, eight, seven, six years old, and they're so successful, so young, they don't have to evolve. They don't get a lot of real life, um, uh, experiences, which is sometimes why you see them not work anymore because they're relying on that Disney Channel or whatever type acting. Whereas opposed to like the way Michael Rainey grew up, he just grew up on TV, but also just in Staten Island with his friends and I know all them and I'm like, they're fucking out of their mind. And I'm like, oh, that's why you're so normal is because this is what you're around. Like I've stayed with Michael at the end of a couple seasons when I've lost my places for a couple months. And I've always been like, why is he so like down to earth and normal. And I saw the people he grew up with, even though he, you know, had money and fame at a young age. I was like, oh, that's why you're so fucking normal. Cause these guys are out of their mind. And he just happened to be on TV, but also was mm. around all these normal people. Well, like Shane um, Harper in our show yeah. had success as a young, young man mm -hmm. um, and a, quite a bit of it. So it's like, he's, uh, but he's, 
to, not an anomaly or nothing, because obviously Michael's so talented. But like Shane is magnificent, I think, as oh, Vic, yeah. especially the second season. Oh yeah, it's such so such complexity. And uh, Gary, who was a fan, because Gary is the one I believe that hired him on. Um, uh, I want to say it's not. What is it? High Town. High Town. Because mm-hmm. I was going to say P Town, but it's not <laughs> yeah, P Town. That's P Valley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it makes put them together. Yeah. But but so on High Town, uh, which is a great show. I mean, and you got heavy hitters. You know, James Badgedale, who's a friend, is fantastic on that show too. But Shane was great on that show. So I think that Gary really understood how he could use Shane more than I think that he was. Let's say how he wasn't utilized right. as well as possibly he could have been on that first season. But I think he really is this second season and Shane is stepping up to the plate yeah, and he's, he's doing fantastic. Yeah. I think he got success at like, cause he, we just had him on the crew has it. By the way, I fucking love Shane. He's one of the greatest. Human yeah. Great guy, life. great human being. Um, we had him on a couple of weeks ago and he, I think he got success a little, like not so young. I think it was like, so he definitely got some life experience. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, but he, um, uh, he was talking about how he was go because he was put in a box. Like as you're, you know, you said you were put in a box doing the Soprano stuff. Um, he was put in a box as a as a Disney actor. So he was going through kind of like a weird part of his life, and he had that that Bieber hair, shaved the he- shaved the head, did the audition, and that's how he got High Town because he was in such like kind of a dark place and like he was just kind of living his life. Um, and he did that, and that's how he got High Town. Um, so it's interesting. That's how he was saw. He was it be able to be seen not as a Disney guy. Because he just did what he wanted to do, went on with his life, and then yeah, now again another on thing like we were saying before, physicalities. Like there's a there is a place for that. Like just having to change. I don't even know. How, I wonder. Just like, again, I'm being such an actor. I'm like, yeah. Well, how about me again? But I, I really, I really am thinking like, how, how did how did. I wonder how I was viewed as a young, you know, because I didn't have any success. So they didn't. So I was a bit more of a blank slate. And I I did audition for, but nobody knew what to do with me. Yeah. Nobody. And I would audition for everything. Yeah, I guess sometimes it is a gift and a curse because you could, like, if you're a little more character like you did Sopranos, they're like, oh, he'd be great to play this guy as opposed to being, you know, and they don't know what to do with you. They're like, yeah, you're a great actor, but like, where do we put you, you know? So I guess there's a there's a gift and a curse to ha- to being specific in a way. Yeah, I, I would totally agree because it'd be like, oh, we know that, we can go get that guy. Right. Where they're like, oh, you're not quite this, you're not quite <laughs> right. that. You know, I'm like, I'm never, I've never been quite anything. Yeah. But yeah. Well, so, now you're fucking Tommy. Now you're Tommy. You're, yeah. you're yeah. sealed yeah. in as fucking Tommy. Eating yeah. ice cream. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dealing do, drugs. Do you think, um, like, Perfect World, Force nine seasons. I'm gonna say it right now. Let's do it. Um, we're gonna talk about yeah. it. It's gonna happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the way it happens. Um, like, what would be so ideal for you to do next? A comedy again. Yeah. I mean, my favorite job I ever had was uh, um, a show called The Heart She Holler on Adult Swim. <laughs> okay, I gotta watch it. Oh, you you haven't seen it? No. It's so good. Is it? It's so good. How, did you do a couple episodes? Or? I did. I did uh, the first season and the second season. Nice. It was my first series regular nice. job, and um, it was me, Patton Oswalt, Amy Sedaris, Heather Lawless. Wow! Um, like all these really super. Those are like funny, UCB Groundlings legends. Just great people. Which actually, that was the job I had right before the Power Show, and it was super influential to find the the humor in Tommy. Mm-hmm. I had just been working with all these really funny people that. Uh, it was they weren't they were all comedians, but they're all their timing was so um, unbelievable. Just that little bit of an extra pause, and so I I really ended up using so much of that for the Tommy character. I I want to piggyback off that because I have a question. Because obviously, like people make the comparisons, we're totally different characters, Brady and Tommy. But like you're the white guy yeah, to, yeah, yeah. to the there's, you know, there's, to yeah. Ghost Son, um, and Ghost. Uh, did you ever have difficulty? Because I feel like as Brayden. That's the hardest thing for me. And I think it's because I'm so much, like, Brayden is so different where I'm so much, like, lighter and comedy because I don't come from such a dark past. That's why Tommy's dark. Brayden comes from a a better past, but, like, he's trying to break out of that, so he's trying to get into the darkness. Mm -hmm. But, so I feel like the most difficult thing for me is to to get a script and see Brayden and and go, this could be really funny or... it could be really serious. So sometimes I like, sometimes I don't know where to go with it. Like, and then sometimes directors will come up and be like, this is a really dark episode. We need you to be funny this episode. I'm like, okay, great. I got to do this and it's got to be funny. Or, or as opposed to the opposite where it's like, oh, like Kane is doing a lot of funny stuff this um, this episode. So let's, let's get Braden a little more serious. 
it's hard because different directors want different things. Or do you feel like that was ever a problem with Tommy for six seasons? Like finding the humor or finding the serious stuff? Or do you feel like that wasn't a challenge? I always um, follow the director's impetus or at least give them what they want. And then I've got to be true to who I think the character is. So I always followed what I felt kind of first and foremost. But I never said – I don't remember ever saying no. Um I, th I think on, on the fourth show, there's times where there, there have been very infrequent, but every now and again, there'll be a director who will say maybe this, or even a writer will have a suggestion. I'll be like, okay, well, let's talk about that. Right. Like, that where did this come from exactly? Because it's not, I don't, I don't see the value in it necessarily, but I, I certainly during the power show, there was a couple of jokes when they would write jokes for the Tommy character in the power show. There was a couple of jokes that I was just like, yeah, it happens. It happens. Yeah. I still said it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I said, um, but I, I, you know, I think that we've been blessed through with just such talented writers in the sure. power show and yeah. great writing on the ghost show. And I really like Brett. Right. Uh, I had a great time working with uh, Brett Mahoney on the ghost show. And, uh, and I'm just, and I really believe in Gary Lennon. Yeah. He, he's just such a beautiful writer, but uh, there's always, but Gary also trusts me to make the funny. So there's a lot less jokes written in the in the um in the fourth show, right. but still every bit there's humor in it every bit because because sure. and I appreciate that that's a great symbiotic relationship between me and Gary is that he trusts me to find the funny right. and that's more yeah and that's more fun for me anyway but not that's not that doesn't mean that um if there's a if there's a joke I'm gonna I'm going for it yeah, Don't yeah, worry yeah about yeah. it but I think just like you I think that we we are both adept at finding the funny ourselves right. too. Right. I think a lot of the funny, which I love from Tommy, is is like the darkness in him. Oh yeah. There's so much humor in the darkness. Yeah, like yeah. like specifically it's coming to my mind when you um in power season five, four or five, you run over uh oh, Domingo. G Rod. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, is that his real Domingo? Yeah, his yeah. real, yeah. Yeah. And uh you run him over with a car. It's just like such a it's just like it comes from the darkness, but it's just so funny. Like what did you say to him at the end? You okay? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then you, you, your fat fuck of a cousin could have run faster than that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but shout out again to the, that was really great writing. That was Heather Zulke, the uh, um, the present showrunner of BMF. Right. Oh um, no way. Yeah. So she wrote that episode. Wow. Yeah. So that was funny. And the and um uh the you know the one two ten that was Heather wrote that. I don't I don't think I improved any of that stuff. And I'm yeah. like, you got ten seconds. One, <laughs> two, ten. <laughs> You know, it was like so. So a lot of credit to the writing on that. I mean, yeah. it was really great writing, yeah, that, and it's such a funny damn scene. Yeah, just it's it is so Tommy. There is such comedy in the yeah. in the, in the what, darkness. What was what was your favorite? Um, I want to know both of you. Um, your favorite scene, obviously, in in four so far that we've seen. We're up to this is being recorded. Episode five had just aired, right? Episode mm -hmm. five. Or is it episode five just aired? Yep. Yeah, episode five just aired, which we got to get into some Tommy Flanagan stuff. Spoiler alert: <laughs> If you haven't seen episode five, stop watching this episode and then watch this later. <laughs> but um, what's your favorite scene you've done on four so far? And I want to know like some of your favorite scenes from OG Power and some of your favorite scenes okay. from, from Force. My favorite scene so far, um, I think it's with um, with the grandmother. Um, what was his name? Dre's character's name. Oh. Uh, 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 Little, little, little K, K. Little K, okay. little K, little K's grandmother. Okay. I enjoyed that scene. Why Dada Cardo, who plays the grandmother, she's fantastic. And I really enjoyed working with her. She, nice. was, she was great. Yeah. She yeah. gave you so much attitude. She, she that did. That seems super she real. She wasn't giving and you now we've become friends. We go see we go see shows together and everything. She's, here, it, yeah, here, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, oh, awesome. we go see some Broadway plays and stuff. Nice. Yeah, oh, so wow. it's, nice. Yeah, nice. That, was, that was my favorite scene. Yeah, and you have you have some favorites coming up? Yeah. <laughs> There's some good, good stuff. Oh man! Good oh stuff. man! The way you said that. <laughs> well, the, my the favorite, my favorites of his scenes is yet to happen. Oh, too. I can't. Wait, what episode is it? Seven. Seven. We're seeing. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, if you watch so this Carousel episode and you're watching episode seven when it airs, they'll they'll know. Oh, I think so. <laughs> okay. Go 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 go. Oh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny because when we do this shit, because me and Michael will be like, dude, season four. Cause, cause we were filming Crew Has It last year while we were simultaneously shooting season four, and we would come in and recap three, 
But we like three, that episode was just sick, 306, but like what we just did today. And people were like, what the fuck? We're not gonna see this for a year and a half. Stop doing that. At least you guys only have a couple weeks yeah, until that true. stuff happens. But people are like, people are like a year and a half ago, me and Michael like that fucking scene in 407 is crazy. Um, but what, what, what were some original power ones that you love doing, if you remember? I mean, so many. Yeah. I think the the biggest career scene was killing Holly, Lucy Walters, who I love and adore. That was just t a tough 10 hours of yeah. kind of doing the same motions of that death scene and it physically exhausting and mentally and knowing that I wasn't going to be working with my friend no more for a little while. Yeah, um, yeah, that was a tough day and, a, and a, that was a tough day, tough scene. I love working. Can, can, I, can I piggyback on yeah. that for one second? Please. Because I don't want you to go into something else, right? I have such a new respect for for stuntmen and for not stuntmen, but like um like I was watching Rush Hour three yesterday. I hadn't seen it in years, uh -huh. and I watched Fun the movie. stuff that Jackie Chan was doing, and I was like, as a kid when I was watching that movie, I was like, this is that is so fucking hard because I can't imagine how hard just you know choking um uh you know Holly was all day long. It's 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 taxing on you, um especially with the acting, and and then you see the stuff that Jackie Chan's doing. They got to reset everything. I'm like. This is so fucking hard and you don't realize it. Like that shit is, is no joke. So I have a newfound respect after watching Rush Hour 3 yesterday. And I can imagine how long that day was doing that. Yeah. And like, just even to piggyback on that, I was going to just say, and I loved so many, I loved working with Omari. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, again, the, he's, he was a great scene partner and a lot of fun. And we obviously had a ton of scenes together. Uh, I think that his death kind of came out and, and, that was it was just felt very real in the moment right at the time when that death scene came and just even michael was so engaged to the whole thing and right. seeing him so that was a, a a big one i loved uh working with enrique yeah. who you never kind of never knew what the fuck he was gonna do <laughs> yeah. or say yeah and what a, another just wonderfully talented actor i really uh developed a strong bond with mike dopid who played the yes. jason mitchich love him we got to get him on the podcast i tried to get him on last he's year. he's got the best voice yeah and uh, but he's just a lovely actor, and and again another guy who's just so kind and able to play so deeply evil. Yeah. At the same time, yeah. So we just had just an, an unbelievable cast of characters, and on uh, the uh, the Power Force show, um, definitely my scenes are coming up. My episode seven again, my friend Eric Aviles, who's actually he's I love that uh, he's playing. Uh, a Puerto Rican gangster from Chicago, and he was a Puerto Rican gangster from Chicago. And so there'll be a fun, and Eric and I did a play called Zoot Suit together um, by Luis Valdez. Uh, we did that play 25 years ago now together. So it was just great to be back uh, on a set with him. So that was a just huge. Um, Larry Newman Jr., who is the guy who Tommy buys the um, – uh, firehouse loft from yeah he passed away uh, uh but and i had never worked with him in chicago theater and he's a bit of a chicago theater legend and i was just like when his audition came i was like oh can we hire him he's he's just a legend yeah and i got to have my scene with him and you know rest in peace so there's been just yeah. really wonderful wonderful times uh coming up and also man can we just give a shout out we gotta you guys gotta get manny on here oh for sure we, we're trying to get we're trying to get everyone from force over the next oh, yeah. couple weeks ahmad's flying in tomorrow oh, like, is he yo we got we're trying to get everyone here we got um uh patricia who plays your mother oh, she's yeah. coming on tomorrow she's, too oh you're gonna have a great time yeah. with her she's a blast i've been dming her she's the best yeah i was like i was like we're gonna have a great time she goes that's all we ever need to do is have a great time i was like because yeah. that's kind of yeah. how i live yeah. my life i'm like yeah. i'm fucked with her yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but we're trying, I'm trying to get Isaac. We're going to go back oh, to LA. I'm going to get Isaac, Isaac on. Great human being. Um, but, but Patricia's killing it this season. Oh, she, for yeah, sure. She's, she's, for sure. Again, she's been given a great amount to do and she's knocking it out of the park. Right. I really want to get into her brain about OG power and how like, I, I, I can't wait. I, it's, I think it's just such an amazing thing, this whole universe and what we get to do. And I hope we have more crossover stuff, which, you know, yeah, hopefully that, that starts happening. The boy's going to come to Chicago. Oh, but, yeah. um, uh, I want, I, I had a question that hit my brain. Um, when you brought up Enrique, he talked about when he did his episode, um, kind of on your John Voight story where him and Omari accidentally hit each other and they got into something during his death scene. I remember that. Um, did, had I you, was there. <laughs> I want to hear a little bit, but like, did you, did you have any of those scenes that happened with you and Omari where like you guys really got into it or some of that accidentally happened or not even Omari with someone else? 
Yes, Black Grimace. Um, oh yeah. Uh, we there's a scene where Tommy beats him up in the um, in the uh, big warehouse. Mm-hmm. A guy named um, Sandy uh, was directing that episode, and his he, real name's Avery, correct? Uh, is it Avery? Yeah, Avery. yeah, yeah. Black Grimace. Yeah, mm-hmm. Avery. Yeah, he's great guy. Great mm-hmm. guy. So they had me wearing this camera. And they they used it for maybe about 20 seconds, but I was filming with that thing on for at least four hours total. I would take it off and stuff, but it was way too long to having that camera on and I was exhausted. And then there was a point where afterwards where I have them down and I'm, you know, like punching. And there was one time where it, I knew the cameras here. I knew I had to go a little bit, but I have, you know, I got this one knuckle. That's a big old bull knuckle there. And I got him right in the forehead and then immediately he had an egg there. And I stopped. He's like, no, no, keep going. I, I, it's okay. And then I was like, no, no, it's not okay. And then I was like, you know, make sure he's all right. And then the thing was just swelling up like this. I was like, God damn it. He's like, no, no, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And I said, Avery, it matters. You, right. you matter. It's right. never okay to hit somebody. Right. It's unprofessional. Right. It should never happen. I'm sorry that it did happen, but let's make sure it never happens again. <laughs> right. And then I made sure there was a bottle of Dom Perignon in his <laughs> camper. You, you did that? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. But it was just like, um, you know, the it's unprofessional yeah in fact but it I happens had, you it, oh it happens right. but i had from when i was on banshee i had gotten a um a cracked sternum and and uh cracked ribs and a bruised sternum that mm-hmm. almost cracked or it was awful it was the most pain i've ever been in my life and then i did an episode afterwards of um oh god uh shannon did this this, this show it was it's called uh Shanna Stein, who Shanna Stein. she was a producer, director, also on. Yeah, she's Power awesome. As well. I'll give Joe a second to pull the name of that thing. So I'll oh just. God, keep... Shanna's a great person, really. Uh, Shanna's very beautiful. I saw her last. Un- week I want to say we unstoppable, were... unbreakable. There we go. Un- unforgettable. Unforgettable. <laughs> and so I hey, did. Thanks, a... Dave. I did... Thanks, Dave. And so I did an episode of Unforgettable afterwards, and there was a guy who was playing my brother on the thing, and we're, we were doing a, f- a fight scene, and I said to the stunt coordinator, who I know quite well, I said, "Look." Got to let this guy know I got some bruised ribs. We can do the thing, but I have to go down slow. Can we cut here? We did the whole thing worked out. Well, you know, the other actor who shall remain nameless. Uh, Joe's a nameless guy. Maybe we call people out in here. Ice Cube, uh, you never showed up to the podcast. Continue. Oh. <laughs> the big, we're going to call that the little three. <laughs> Right, um, so so he, the actor got, was caught up in the moment, as you know, sometimes actors do. Mm-hmm. And then... Uh, and we stopped, and I was like, Jesus fucking Christ, you know, God damn it. Listen, man, are you, you all right? It's not going to happen again. Well, it happened again. And I, I got up, and he's like, bro, I'm sorry. I said, you are sorry. You're unprofessional. Like, I fucking went off on this guy right in front of the cast. And I said, I need him. It was like one of the first times I ever did this shit ever. Anyway, the props department became the props department on the power show. No. And they totally remembered. Wow. They were like, they were like, you did warn the guy. And you, that was ball. Cause I was like, I need a minute. And then the first day D is like, we're losing light. We're going to do this. I said, I'm taking a walk. Yeah. I'll be back in a second. Hopefully you get another take. I was so <laughs> mad, but I always remember that, that there just isn't an excuse. It, it, shit happens. Right. But when it happens twice, go fuck yourself. Right, right, right. You know, I get, I get a little bit mad. Yeah, it's like, no, you know I, I definitely get that. Yeah, shit does happen as an actor. Like you want to be as in the scene as possible, but like to be professional, like you can't. Don't fucking hit people. Don't do that because it it will fuck up the scene. If you get something on your face or something, you can't continue shooting. Yeah, like especially, especially like you know if you do that to a, if you do that to a lead and you're a guest person, right. which is like. You know, mm-hmm. hey, look, it shit happens too. But like, then they can't shoot for the next rest of the week. You're costing all these thousands and thousands. It's right. just like do your homework, right. do, practice a little bit. You have to know there has there is a t- we're skilled people. You know, right. we we're good actors, and then we have to be uh, capable at the stunt, and we have to know where we're at to you know right. make sure that it's in there. It's funny because I'm thinking about like Avery because I know, like I've, we've talked about we follow each other on Instagram. We talk a decent amount. And a lot of times actors who, especially on power, because we have such a big fan base and everyone loves the show, that when they come on the show, they're like, you could fucking throw me off a roof for all we can. (laughs) Like run me over with nine cars. I just want to be on power. So I assume when you hit Avery, he's like, no, it's fucking, this is Tommy Egan. Like, I don't give a fuck. Tommy hit me. Hey. (laughs) Exactly. It's a story for him. Um, (laughs) But yeah, that's that's. I wanted to give him so much love though, too, because he's such a wonderful human being. I really had a great crew of guys, you know? JR and mm-hmm. Avery and we had like the a fun fun crew on the old JR's a fucking man too. I oh, love he's JR. fantastic. Yeah. 
I, just, I, I really have met some of the, I can't, I'm, you've been here six years, five years longer than me. Um, I've really met some of the greatest fucking people in the world and this whole universe, everything. And I, it just, it keeps growing. I was in Chicago with you guys. I met all your writers. I'm like, is there a fucking bad person? Like, I, I love. How about how great is Kendra? The best, the best. She is. And she loves, she was a power fan. Really? Oh yeah. Such a power fan. Yeah. She remembers, she's like Chris Lofton. When I'm just like, what episode was that? You know, and Lofton's like, that was season three, episode <laughs> yeah, two. Yeah, it's crazy. Not I'm like, and that was like, and that and that guy's name was like <laughs> Dominic. Now he's like, yeah, it was like Dom Dominic, but like you know, it's like spelled it with a K and this. And I was like, what the? <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, he talked about his tape when he when he came on Crew Has It for his first time. He talked about how his tape he went crazy. He was he was breaking shit. He like going. Oh, he showed me did. that. He, he, you seen it? Yeah, I was like, they hired you. <laughs> <laughs> After they saw that, they hired. You? Wait, why? What was it like? Because you're a producer, you've seen it, but like I didn't know you seen it. What was that tape like? It was wild. It was wild. You <laughs> oh know, it was God. like could be a liability. I mean, <laughs> yeah, but, you know. But he's he's fantastic. What a sweetheart, right? The best. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He 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 was in like a hotel. He said he did it in a, like a Four Seasons. <laughs> that makes it even better. He, yeah, it was, he, a, it was he, a damn solid audition. It was raw. It was raw. Yeah, and he's been so raw. This 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 uh, Gen Zell uh, episode episode four. Knocked yeah. it out of the park. He yeah. showed up ready, but also we got to give credit to Kieran Hawks who directed that yeah. episode. Because yeah. I like, I often say that when people are like, "Hey, man, that was a breakout performance." Well, I, I, you can give the actor some credit, and other, other people deserve the credit. Blah blah blah. You got to spread that out. But when every actor in the entire episode is shining, which is what happened episode four, you kind of got to look to the director for sure. And and he just did a magnificent job. What a fucking episode! It's the first episode I watched three times. I got to say. Well, that's yeah, yeah. that's wrong. I watched it four times because I saw it raw too. Right, the original. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. What? Um, I was gonna ask. Wait, what, what, what was my? Uh, oh, oh, the Tommy Flanagan stuff. R.I.P. Walter Flynn. Rest in peace, Walter Flynn. How great of a guy is he? He's the best. The best. He's what, the best. What, he loves what, you. What, sings your praises, of <laughs> yeah. course. Bust your nuts and yeah. sings your praises. Uh, he's so will t- literally. <laughs> he will. Te- I'm not joking. He will text me now at like 3 a.m. Like, what are you doing, you little man? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, nothing, you old fuck. What are yeah, you doing? Yeah, He's yeah. like, let's meet at Malibu uh, Soho House tomorrow for lunch. I'm like, bet I'll see you there, you old fuck. I'm like, see if you can make it. Yeah, <laughs> it's so yeah. fucking funny. Like, that's just a relationship we have. I love it. Um, w- when you saw those, like, when that was being written or because you do you- i went to that film to see to watch that being filmed not that not the entire night but i was there for a huge part of that day um and uh lisa domain who directed it she's also a uh, supervising producer on season two of power book four force she i think she did a great job um uh it was really uh you know highly coordinated and uh, episode five and i think that the, what they did as well to give some love to guy van swearingen who plays Polly pierogi yeah. Uh, the guy went out like a boss, you know, and he, 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 it's a shame to lose him too. I hated it because he had such the authenticity of Chicago right. that it's like, he's such a, such a Chicago guy. And, you know, he's got, that's his accent and you know, that it's like, he's, he's the real deal. Yeah. So it's going to suck to lose that. Um, but man, what a fucking episode. I mean, yeah. and Gary has, uh, had, he still has, cause it's not over with yet. Uh, a really tough task of kind of like, you know, shrinking this world and and expanding a world at the right. same time. I think, and he's doing an, an amazing job at it. Like I just, For sure, I'm, re- I'm really, I'm really, really enjoying being um, an audience member right. this this season, and I'm, I'm really getting into the characters. Yeah, you find it, you find it hard to be an audience member, also as the lead of the show and a producer. I, for some reason, it seems easier now. Yeah, because like with anything, I mean. You have to fight for your seat at the table. And yeah. again, to mention our show's name is that nobody gives up power freely. So just because you get called a producer, it doesn't really mean anything. You know, I want to be like, hey, I want to help because not only do I love Chicago, but, you know, being from Chicago, but like I, I study the shit out of the because it's like I, I've been gone for I've lived in New York for decades. And it's like right. I went back early to get to re know the city, to re find these places to to have this influence you know and i i did grow up around a 
as we all did as as urban guys grow up, we know the shady characters, and I want the show to reflect what I know to be real. Right. But then I want to know what real is. But then if you're not paying attention, people are trying, like, oh, I'll tell, I'll do this. So I don't know why. Right. It's Gary's much more inclusive, but Gary's in LA a lot. You know, right. Gary's not on the ground every single second. So it was hard to. It was tough, man, to right. to negotiate without. I don't want to step on toes. I don't want to hinder the process. But I'm just like, I want this to be amazing. Give a fuck. I care yeah. so much. Well, I feel the same way. Like, and even you've been here way longer than me. I go up after I'm done shooting for the day. I'll go up to Brendan's office, who's our. Um, have you met Brendan Walsh? Great guy. Um, I'll go up to his office. And I'm like, what's the next script look like? Like, like, I just want it to be great. So season four, we've actually found a lot of like little, little things. Cause as we know, like for shows, sometimes the littlest things are like the biggest things, the, the coolest things. Like a lot of stuff that um, Tommy and Ghost used to do, like the little things were what people fucking loved about the show. Like your guys' brotherhood, like when you're in, you know, for example, uh, um, changing changing clothes oh but, yeah burning them that was a great scene but like sometimes that stuff's not even scripted like you guys are like okay they're having this conversation or maybe in early drafts it's like these two are you know driving or doing this and they're like why don't we make it like something so small of you two in a thing burning clothes and talking about something fucking real that matters it makes the show so much better because people at home are like wow that's fucking badass like these two are burning clothes that just murder people as opposed to before it just being like them walking down the street yeah like and I feel like Force this season has done such a good job of like honing in on that as the well. minutia I think right. you're totally right man. right they really have done a great job like even uh Dr. Kendall's uh when they uh, broke his hands right like i just thought that that's it but you know forgive me i wish i could remember that actor's name and i'm sure i've seen it a million times of paper he did, he did well yeah. he killed it yeah he was amazing and manny was great too and max arseniego who you know plays uh, uh max uh, manny's number two miguel's number two is just i thought everybody was so pitch perfect in that scene and then making smashing his hand with an award yeah, yeah. i was like yo that's Fucking rowdy. Wild. Good for you, Sammy Horowitz. Yep. Who also yeah. plays Joey yeah. in the thing, our writer who yep. wrote yeah. the episode. He was great in that scene. He man. was great. Yeah. And again, a Chicago voice, a real Chicago voice. Oh, Sammy's Chicago? Sammy's grew up on the northwest side, but he gangbanged on the southwest side. Did 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 you stay there for um the whole the whole year you lived in Chicago for? I was actually I was there for I think uh the first like two months uh -huh. and then I started to go back and go forth back and between forth, episodes. Yeah. 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 It was the fun way having it was you. Boarding, it was got, great. It was, we got to go down to the, the Art Institute. Nice. Man, I loved it. I, I fell in love with Chicago. Like yeah. really enjoyed it. But I was there in the ideal time because it was we I got there in what June? Mm -hmm. Beginning yeah. of June. Yeah. And I was there until very beginning of October or right. September. That's so a like, perfect time. Yeah, yeah. Was, yeah. The, the weather was. You listened to the Shane Harper episode you told me when you walked in, and I was saying in that episode, I was like, I just want to fucking shoot in LA and I want to leave set and I want to go to fucking Bootsy space. Bellows. I want my parking space. I want to go to Bootsy Bellows, but I just fucking got off set with the bottles. That's my, I don't, I, and I'm going to start appreciating shooting in New York more. Um, do, do you, where do you like shooting? Like, have you shot in LA? Yes. And what yes. do you think about it? Um, I, you know, I, when I was listening to all that, I, I thought it was interesting, you know, and, and in, in ways I feel like you do, but right. then I also like what Chris was saying, right. you know, about going to this, so it doesn't really feel like work. Right. You know, um, I like to travel. I'm a traveler. So it's like a summer camp, uh, it's yeah. like a summer camp type vibe. Yeah. And I had that, that's what the experience was in Chicago, you know, and it was like, I'm learning the city and all these new people. And, you know, it was, um. I felt like I was on a high for three months straight. You know when when you get that new job or you meet a new girl, it's something. You know, oh, and, I just met a new girl. I'm yeah. on that right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you know exactly I'm down what I'm bad, boys. <laughs> yeah. You know when you're riding that high. Well, this one was an extended period. Usually, it doesn't last that long. With yeah. me, you know, like three months straight. And, I, and I remember being in it. Like you're saying now, you're you're stopping to like yeah take it all in and mm -hmm. yeah I. I was aware that I was in that. I fucking love that. I yeah. love that you're in that place because I want, that's where I want to be. Because for so long, I was just like, yeah, this is fucking dope. Cool, cool, cool. What are we do? Like, I really want to start cherishing it more. Okay. I love shooting in New York. It's my, I love it. Do you like it better than Chicago? You know, I better choose my words wisely. It's, I, I love shooting in New York so much. I loved shooting in Chicago too. It was, um, 
it was nostalgic for me, but right. it was also, uh, uh, I think that I, I liked, I appreciated when we got into the neighborhoods a little bit more in right. Chicago in season two. I, I don't, I don't mind using the beauty cause it is an architecturally beautiful city right. and that's cool. We still got that in, but I like showing the supermarket and those, yeah. you know, the little taco stands. And I love showing not just the barbershop, but the areas around the barbershop where we've, we've had two victims already, um, you know, uh, uh, innocent victims in our season. And right. I, I love that they had that because right. it's, and we don't uh, just pass it by. We follow that person right. into the right. hospital or into death or that mother. And we're, we're showing, man, this is, you, you really want to be part of this life? I mean, right. it's, 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 it's terrible. It's could be just terrible. Right. Really vicious. It's right. Fuck. I love that they're doing that. Me too. Yeah. Me too. And I, yeah. So I love how they're utilizing Chicago. I think that um, Courtney and the uh, writers did a magnificent job of utilizing New York City too, because it wasn't just, you know, all these scapes of Manhattan. It was a ton of great stuff in Queens, a ton of great stuff in, in Staten Island, quite right. frankly, and the Bronx. And we utilized every borough. And I, I just felt they did an incredible job because power isn't, wasn't true. It wasn't the wire. Ne was never meant to be. Right. It was an, kind of an skewed version, but that's really tough to do because if you make something as skewed, you have to stick by those skewed rules that you made up right. and stick to them, you know, as best as you can. So I think that they did that, and I think that I think that Gary did that to Chicago. It's now ours, like we own it. Yeah. There's a I think there's a real possession of the city now. So I just can't wait to get back and do season three. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. The strike's fucking almost over. Thank God. But but to go back onto what you said, yeah, like it. It is really cool. Like last night I was go I just went out in Brooklyn and I was with my my videographer who's a huge power fan before we even met. And um I was it, do you watch Ghosts? Have you seen all the episodes? Yeah, yeah. You know where I couldn't kill the uh the yes. progies? Yeah. I was I was uh we were driving, we literally passed that church and I was like, Oh, that's super cool. Like we literally um and I was with Garrett who's on Canaan. He was on the original power as well. He's a base camp guy. Mm -hmm. Great fucking guy. And um I was like, Yeah, that's where I couldn't and then Tariq shot the um the guy with the progies. And he was like, Wait, what? And like you don't realize like how I was like, Yeah, it's just a like a location right there. And we was like, Wait, where's this party? And he's like, Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. you like have to like roll down the window and be like, dude, it looks so different. Like yeah. that's so cool to people. And it's like, I was like, actually, you know what? That is really fucking cool that like, he's like, you guys just shoot on the side of the street. And I was like, yeah, like yeah. that's literally what we do. Like people don't get that sometimes. It's funny that you're mentioning churches because um, there was a few churches that I got to shoot at in the, uh, um, in the original. Uh -huh. Because you know, remember the Father Callahan right. character? We yep. did that. But then was, the, Jim, was that Jim Norton? Jim Norton, so who, fucking cool. And what a great actor Jim yeah. Norton is! What a great underestimated actor is that guy was friggin' brilliant. Yeah, and hilarious. It, like anything, like of course he added like that levity and that stuff to the character. But like he was so good at being damn serious. Right. It was it, Jim Norton. How how amazing is this guy? He's a comedian and he's great and he's brilliant awesome. and funny. And yet he allowed me to be funny yeah. with him. Yeah. Generous. Because yeah. he could have taken everything. Right. But he allowed that. I was I'm eternally grateful to Jim Norton for that. Yeah, he's a good dude. Yeah. Yeah. But then also the place was right on Washington Street, the church where the Koreans shot up and ghosts came yes. out of the nowhere. Fucking amazing. That, that scene. was a great scene too. Amazing a lot of scene. a lot of churches. And then Shane Harper's character in there, the Vic Flynn character, lives in an old converted church. Yep. Yep. Which I kind yep. of love too. Uh, all that stuff. I think there's so much beauty in in the in churches. So a lot of times, for sure. scouts are like, "That looks cool." And you're like, "Oh, okay." Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all, all right. So before we, I, I did did uh, Alvin tell you I went to Poland? We were talking about traveling. Did Alvin tell you I went to Poland? You told me you went to Poland. Oh, did we talk about this? Yeah, in Chicago. Oh, right, right, right. Oh, I did. Oh, I talked to you about it, not your brother yeah, Alvin. That's yeah. so funny. We were supposed to get lunch. Yeah, because I know you're a Polish guy, and so is Dave. Dave's like dying. He's like, um. You've never been though, right? Never been you to gotta Poland. Gotta go. I know, Dave. Yes, you Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't know what that means. He went. Mm. No, the, did you did you see what he said? He said right back to me. He just said Kiedy Mijiemy. Oh, You're right. Oh, we'll we'll oh, dub it in. Oh, was hey, what does so, that mean? Give me a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> depends on, depends on who you say it to. <laughs> <laughs> Where, where's where's favorite places you guys have traveled? I just was in Crete for a month. Oh wait, why were you there? Just chilling? Yeah. Strike. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It was dope. I'm 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 partial to Greece. I mean yeah. 
And I don't go to Mykonos. I don't go to those places. Yeah, but it's too touristy. I mean, there's no, all the food, right? It's all grown there. There's no chemicals. There's no GMOs. Everything's fresh. Yep. The Mediterranean is like healing. You know, you, I, I just, hands down, That's Greece awesome. for me. You meet yeah. any girls there? I did not. Wait, are you are you married or no? I'm not married. Oh, yet. my God, dude. Like, this guy looks like this and he's fucking single, dude. Get out there, baby. Yeah. Get Slide in his DMs, okay? <laughs> Look at that fucking hair, dude. Are you kidding I me? Know, I know. I know. Like, I'm so the? jealous. Uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Wait, did you meet girls out there or no? You just... I did not, man. I, From what I understood, it was like, so I stayed in this Airbnb and this couple there, the woman, you know, said to me, I told her I was looking for a Greek wife and she was like, <laughs> Is that actually you, why you went? No, no. But <laughs> and she said, mm, you know, you come to the wrong place. I said, why? She goes, my husband from Crete. He's from Svakia in this in Crete. And she goes, I'm from, I don't know, Kaz is the island, Kaz, yeah, mm -hmm. which is like I don't know, very close to Crete. Right. And she said it took his family ten years to accept her as his wife because she was not Crete. Oh my god. <laughs> so she's like, yeah, and. I mean, there were other women from Europe there, but that's not why I go. Right. When I was young, that's why I would go. Now, that's why I go. I, now, I just went to Europe for a month, too. That's why I went. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. At this age, for me, it's about, like, that's the cradle of Western civilization. Right. Like, you know what I mean? The Minoan civilization, all that. That's what I'm interested in. Yeah. yeah. I love the architecture, but I love... Yeah. Chris is yeah. big into the science behind the architecture, which I also love, too. The old mathematics, the storytelling within the architecture. Of the, the myth. Of, the myth. Yeah. All that stuff. Which your favorite place you've ever gone? Um, probably Italy. It's probably um, yeah. Gala Matesi, yeah. my Joe Perino's village, <laughs> yeah. where his parents are from in oh, Italy. Did you? I went and stayed with him and and his family up in the. It's a. Yeah. It's about an hour into the mountains from Naples. Joe Perino played um, Vincent. 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 What's his last name? Um, Vincent. He was the mob boss the that mob beat boss. up Tariq with the oranges. <laughs> You know, it's funny. Like the first last name that came up in my head, which is not this, but I was like Vincent Gallo. And I'm like, it's not, it wasn't Gallo. I don't know. Gallo, yeah. <laughs> he played, he played Vincent, the mob boss that beat up Tariq. Um, Joe Prino is an amazing guy. We got to get him. Amazing on actor too. Yeah. 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 Um, all right. Is there anything that you guys want to plug? Obviously your Instagrams, all that stuff. Um, I don't, we can't really plug. Not really yet. The strike's not over, but like, obviously we know what's going on. Um, and it's fire. Yeah, it's good, man. This, I, I this last season, I can't wait. I love, uh, I love watching the people from the floor show that you have, and the, the crew has it because right. that's like I'm learning stuff about my cast. I'm like, and I hang with these people. Right. Like the floor show, I think, I think that, um, uh, I think there was kind of different pockets in the power show. Like, I, I, for the most part, everybody got along. Right. But it was just like the floor show. It's like. I, I don't remember like hanging this heavy. Like yeah. we'll go out 10, 12 people at a time, like That's all fire. the time. Yeah. Well, I think it's because, um, it, like I get, I get that because you guys are all in Chicago together. Yeah, like you're, you're right. away. Like a lot of the New York people, everyone lived in New York. So people just went home to their families. Yeah. I think that's, that happens a lot because people are like, like Chris doesn't, you know what I mean? You guys ha don't have all your normal friends around. Right. So you're just like, oh, let's all hang. I think that like, and then obviously you've got to like everyone, but like in New York, a lot of times like me and Michael go out a lot, but like. Yeah, I'll come home in New York to like my apartment. And even though I rent an apartment in Chicago, it's just, I, I it's kind of like not, it doesn't feel like home. Right. So it's like my, and my wife only takes Chicago in like two, three weeks at a time. And then she goes away for two, three weeks and then comes back. <laughs> yeah, it goes out, yeah. So it's like my wife and my cat aren't there. So yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I'm I'm like, hey, let's go out. Yeah. Let's get a glass of wine. Let's go play pool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Any anything to plug, anything coming out that you can't I don't know what we can really say. It's everything. I've just so been writing. I, I have nothing coming out, just this show. You've just yeah. been writing since the strike ended three days ago, right? Chris yeah, is a sure. great writer. Chris has oh, sold really? scripts. He's yeah, oh, Chris nice. is um he's been writing for a long time and really mm -hmm. interesting stuff. He's writing he writes scripts from the ground up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I want to start when the strike is completely over doing force recaps. So I would love to have you back on, Chris. Obviously, Joe, you can literally call me at 3 a.m. be like, I want to do a crew hazard right now. I'll be like, all right, bet. the crew's coming. <laughs> um, and then, I, then you're going to text me right back. You're going to be like, all right, old man, yeah. you can make it. Get over here, old man. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm honestly, I'm so glad. Like, obviously, I miss my boy Michael today, but like, I'm so glad that we got to meet I miss him. your boy Michael too. I know. Love that kid. He's the best. He's the best. Um, but yes. 
Joseph Sakura four on Instagram. Yep. And then um, plug your your Instagram. Dude, just look at his fucking started. hair. Slide in, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Slide it into his hair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. What thank is you it? What is, what is your what is your say to say it again for yeah. your Instagram and all your hands? Just Chris Tardio. Chris Tardio. Tardio. No underscore. No nothing. No nothing. Dude, look at him. He got the Chris Tardio. I'm Gianni V Paolo <laughs> on Instagram. I fucking whoever has Gianni Paolo, we need to fight. Um, but yes, TikTok, Instagram. We got crew has it merch um vlogs you know uh all of it so joe michael's not here right now so i need you to i need you to do what we usually do at the end we yell what do we yell at the end of the episode the crew has it, the crew has it. yes baby the crew has it and you have it thank you so much guys for pulling up i appreciate it thank you you know, you know, you know, what, else, you know what else i do love i do love that you and michael have the handshake <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It in, is cool. in the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was actually my handshake with my friends growing up. Oh yeah. And we were trying to figure out in the day, like, what's our handshake? And then we did it, and I was like, oh, that's kind of. So bad. me and Omari's comes from. Oh wait, wait, we're not ending this episode. I need to hear this. It comes. Well, it comes from my old uh, graffiti crew. Was would would shake up because in Chicago graffiti culture is so enmeshed in gang culture. Yeah, your guys are so. Than but, ours. but so our no no it's not it's but our whole thing was so so for UAC would go like this you yeah then you'd slide back on the same finger yeah and it would go like well that's what we would just be careful with that anyway there's a whole handshake <laughs> well, a whole, whole handshake so ours is just basically this so we're pointing at each other instead of making the you yeah. And then what do we do? Then it was it was just like quick, right? Yeah. And, and then, it was like something like, like that. Like that. Yeah. And then and then I throw up the four, and he throws up the five. I wasn't sure, ever sure why. I never asked him because he would always do that back, and then I would always throw up the four because it was the second part of our thing. And then he oh, oh would always do five. We we need to get him on here. Uh, me and him together. I I would love Omar to come on. Please get him on. Like oh come on, let's go do this crew hazard show together. Yes, please. And here's the thing: what just kind of like broke my heart a little bit. You haven't, when's the last time you've done that handshake with him? It's been a while. It's been a while. I, I would like to, I'd like to break the fast here on the crew has it. <laughs> yeah, oh my God, that would be crazy. <laughs> Look at Dave, he's salivating. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Wow, that was a cool little epilogue at the end, you know? Thank you so much, guys. We appreciate it. Woo!